poliomyelitis. Polios means gray and mylos means spinal cord. It is an acute viral infectious disease caused by an enterovirus. Its synonym is infantile paralysis. Stop. Hello guys. Me and Dr. John would like to tell some necessary things about polio. So Dr. John, what is polio? Polio is a highly contagious illness that can spread easily from person to person. Polio is also known as poliomyelitis, infantile paralysis and polio disease. How does polio spread? Polio virus is transmitted in a few ways. Sharing food with an infected person or drinking liquids that are contaminated with polio virus. Polio transmission most often occurs through contact with stool from an infected person. Less frequently, polio transmission can occur through contact with infected respiratory secretions or saliva. How does polio affect the human body? Spinal polio is the most common form. It affects movement of the muscles and causes inflammation of the nerve cells, leading to damage or destruction of motor neuron ganglia. The virus may affect muscles on both sides of the body, but more often the paralysis is asymmetrical. Any limb or combination of limbs may be affected at one leg, one arm, or both legs and both arms. That is so bad. Is there any treatment for this disease? No. Because no cure for polio exists, the focus is on increasing comfort, speeding recovery and preventing complications. Supportive treatments include bed rest, antibiotics for secondary infections, analgesics for pain portable ventilators to assist breathing. What ages are affected by this disease? Polio can strike at any age, but it mainly affects children under 5 years old. So how do people know they have this disease? Most people infected with the poliovirus have no signs of illness and are never aware they have been infected. These symptomless people carry the virus in their intestines and can silently spread the infection to thousands of others before the first case of polio paralysis emerges. How do people plan to prevent a deadly diseases like this? Well, there are safe and effective vaccines. The strategy to eradicate polio is therefore based on preventing infection by immunizing every child until transmission stops and the world is polio free. Well, thank you Dr. John. See you next time. Bye guys. Only humans can be affected with this virus. Only females and males could be infected. It is usually transmitted through fecal oral routes. It could be um, transmitted with the droplets of respiratory secretions of the patients, and it only takes seven to 10 days for the symptoms to males appear. Males get more infected than females. The human body is more vulnerable to this virus from six months to three years old. This virus is more efficient during the rainy season. And you could also get this virus from flies and from dirty food, which were contaminated by this virus. Spinal paralytic poliomyelitis. This is the most common type of poliomyelitis. This is, includes 80% of the cases. This results from lower motor neuron lesion of the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. Most of the muscles affected are the legs, arms, or the trunk. Severe cases could be quadriplegia, paralysis of the trunk, and abdominal and thoracic muscles. The paralysis could be asymmetrical. It could be the legs more than the arms, or it could be descending paralysis. Some of the reflexes would be diminished. Sensation could still be normal. Residual paralysis after 60 days. This is what it looks like. Bulbar polio. This includes 2% of the cases and this is usually life-threatening. The cranial nerve involved in this type of polio is the vagus nerve. 
Symptoms may include nasal twang or hoarseness of the voice, nasal regurgitation, dyspnea, and dysphagia. Bulbospinal poliomyelitis. This includes almost 20% of cases of polio. This is a combination of your spinal paralytic polio and your bulbal polio. Polioencephalitis. This is a very rare kind of polio. Symptoms may include irritability, delirium, disorientation, tremors, convulsions, and paralysis of the upper motor neuron. Manifestations of poliomyelitis. For the non-paralytic, uh, the patients will experience headache, vomiting, sore throat, and fever. For the paralytic patients, there would be constipation, urine retention, paresthesia, and abdominal distension. For the pathogenesis, polio is usually fecal-oral. It could be get through inhalation. It usually infects the pharynx and intestinal mucosa, gains entry by binding to an immunoglobulin receptor known as a poliovirus receptor or CD115 on the cell membrane. For the second part, for the local multiplication, the epithelial cells of the gastrointestinal tract goes through the lymphatic tissue from tonsils to the payer's patches, then spreads to the original lymph nodes, enters the blood streams through the primary viremia, and then multiplies in the reticulo endothelial system, enters the bloodstream again through the secondary viremia. And then from the spinal cord and the brain, it then uh, from the blood streams, it goes directly to the spinal cord and the brain. And then multiplies in neurons and then goes to the generation with nasal bodies. And then there are some nuclear changes that occur. And then when the degeneration is irreversible, it is phagocytated by the leukocytes and macrophages. And then lesions are in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. It results to flaccid paralysis, can cause encephalitis involving the brainstem, motor and premotor areas of the cerebral cortex, and then it destroys all of them. Pharmacological management for patients with poliomyelitis. Sark vaccine, it develops protective antibodies. Sabin vaccine, it provides local gastrointestinal immunity and circulating antibodies. Analgesics to alleviate pain, headache, and leg spasms. Antibiotics to prevent urinary tract infection. Narcotic drugs are contraindicated because of the risk of trouble breathing or shortness of breath. For physiotherapy, we could do passive range of motion for 10 minutes for 2-3 to three times a day. This would prevent deformities and contractures. It could also promote development of muscle power in non-paralyzed muscles. We have goals for patients with poliomyelitis. Minimize or prevent complications. Increase the energy level of the patient. Improve patient's ventilation. Uh, enable the patient to cope up with the situation. Improve muscle strength of the legs and other affected extremities. Our world is a place of beauty and danger that is equal parts adventure 
and disaster. It is Zendikar, our home. And it is under siege. Monsters have emerged everywhere. Some say they have been here all along, trapped. But I say they are not of this world. And it is we who are trapped. They are spreading across Zendikar, killing and consuming. Left unchallenged, they will leave our home a wasteland. But Zendikar has its defenders, heroes who fight to save this world from the forces that threaten to destroy it. We all must find strength in one another. Only then can Zendikar be saved. Now is the time to face this alien threat. To take a stand. To battle for Zendikar. Hit a wall.